Um, the Bible says to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, actually rightly dividing the word of truth. When you read the scriptures, you want to find out, is the author talking to me or, or about somebody else? So here's the scripture says, since all have sinned and are falling short of the glory and uh, honor and glory which God bestows and receives. Um, I was talking to a good person, I won't mention the denomination, and uh, she's been walking with the Lord for a long time. And uh, I said, isn't it wonderful that we know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ? And she said, no, we're not. We're just we're sinners. Oh, and she quoted that scripture to me. All oh, have fallen short in the glory. Of, yeah, but yeah well, I, I know that. But I mean, that, that was before I became a new creature. <laughs> see, that's before I received what God did for me on the cross. But you see, now I'm fully justified. Anybody here justified? Amen. God justifies you. You know, we think that uh, we do uh, uh, ourselves a great favor by, oh, no, I'm not justified. No, wait a minute. If God has justified you, who are you not to, to, to receive it? See, we got to learn to receive, and then that's when the joy begins to come. That's when life begins to come. But if you hang up on that one verse, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, I know, but how many of you know that's talking about the sinners? Uh, we have any saints in here? Uh, okay, we've got quite a few saints in here. See, so now the new identification. We are saints of God, born again by the Spirit of God. New creations all together. If any man be in Christ, they are new creations all together. But how many of you know we've got to divide the Word of God, but we've got to divide our mind a little bit. Because so many times we're hung up on that one thing we're just old sinners. No, you're not. You are a born-again child of God. By the power of God, you've been born again. And we've got to nail that down and get our minds renewed and get the benefit of having a renewed mind. Okay? Now, how many of you know thoughts produce attitudes? Attitudes produce emotions. Emotion produces behavior. And behavior produces a lifestyle. That's why you need to put that on your refrigerator every day and uh, check your thinking. How many checks your teeth? You go to the uh, dentist and get a teeth checked. Let me see your hands. How many's got teeth? <laughs> well, give the Lord a praise. <laughs> see, there's certain things we have to check in our own lives, and we have to check and make sure that each day we are thinking that which God tells us to think on. Because, see, you program your own emotions. You program your own behavior by what you think. It, it's such a simple principle, and yet it is profound that just by us thinking wrong will cause us to act wrong, do wrong. It's simple. So thoughts produce. Everybody say thoughts. thoughts. Produces. Produces. Attitudes. Attitudes. Okay. So check your attitude. Why is your attitude bad? Well, mine's not bad. Mine's good. Everybody say, my attitude is not bad. Not bad. It's good. good. I'll tell you why it's good. Because you've been thinking right thoughts. How many of you know what you sow, you reap? See, these principles uh, in the natural, I, I guarantee you, if you uh, sow corn, you're going to get corn. We've got some people in here raised a garden. I know. I've raised a garden, too. And every time I've ever sowed corn, I got okra. <laughs> every time I sowed okra, I got corn. <laughs> Folks, it don't work that way. It's so simple. That which is natural is first. If you understand the natural principle, you can understand the spiritual principle. Just that simple. And yet people struggle, and I've done my struggling too in my life, trying to figure out, you know, why do I uh, have this bad attitude towards that person, or why do I have that bad attitude about that person, and I've, uh, why do I have that bad attitude about myself? 
Your thoughts can heal you. Oh, now, Bob, you're talking about positive thinking. No, wait, wait a minute. Well, if you want to think negative, go ahead. <clears throat> How many wants to be around negative people? How many wants to be around positive people? I thought so. Talking to the right crowd. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is that man. So that's why the Bible says we have to be, we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In other words, we'll be transformed by thinking what God tells us to think and understand what he has done for us at Calvary and think on what he has done. And, and after a while, this is how it works with me, there's appreciation that springs up in your spirit. If you just feel good in there. It just brings, it's a, such a great appreciation of what God has done for me. You see, when you go and you read the scriptures, it talks about uh, when somebody is, was crucified, a, a criminal, they would uh, write all the different things down on a piece of paper and everything that he did and nail it to the cross where, you, where they crucified him, see? And, uh, and how many know everything that, that we've ever done and all of everything was written down and God nailed it to the cross? That's scripture, you know. Everything's nailed to the cross. So everything in our past is gone, forgotten, nailed to the cross. God did it for us. Now, from here on in, we're walking in the Spirit. We're, we're serving God. But God has made provisions. Uh, and I thank God that uh, if, if you mess up, what do you do? Beat yourself up a couple of days, for at least two days. <laughs> you confess. Everybody say confess. Yeah, yeah. Now, if, 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 if I uh, mess up and, 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 uh, and uh, let's just say that I... Uh, offend him and I know I do I do I did or something then I come to him I should forgive me and he would and I would forgive him we forgive forgiveness forgiveness so how many of you here needs forgiveness we know we all do at times so we get forgiveness and we give forgiveness so keeping our, our attitude someone said I got this bad feeling well I'll tell you what you can always trace it back to the thought life, what you've been thinking. That's just the way it works. Now, take that whole thing. You know, we uh, say, well, i got to change his behavior. That young boy, i got to change that boy's behavior. How are you going to do it? Hmm? Get him to start thinking right. Hello? But we always try to, bip, 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 you better change. If you don't, I'm going to bip, bip you a little bit more. If that don't work, I'm going to send you down there. One of the elders will work you over. And how many of you know it gets more rebellious? That's what produces it. Now, sometimes you have to be spanky. Spanky, spanky. God will spank us, but he loves us. Uh, what is your attitude when God spanks you? Some of you are like parents. You, I don't know if you, now listen, if you're a child of God, you'll get spanked. You know your Bible. I don't have to quote every scripture to you. That's in Hebrews. I remember at one time God was spanking me. And usually I would have a self-pity party. <clears throat> Anybody ever had a self-pity party besides me? You know, we all have. But how many, you know, I sold my pot. <laughs> Get rid of your pot. You know, the, you're not going to move the Lord like that. You know, you can sit on it as long as you want to, if you want to. But I have learned, I have learned that God has made provisions. And, and, and I keep my mind. Now, that, this is where the warfare is. How many, how many of you know that? I'll guarantee you today, you, every one of you have had some thoughts today you had to cast down, didn't you? I know some of you think about that piece of lemon pie that was in the refrigerator, and I hope I can get home before Jimmy does, because I know him. He'll eat it. I about, I, how many had some bad thoughts in their mind today? You, I know, well, I, look at the honest people. The rest of you saints, okay. Well, you are. You're saints. But there's monitor your thought. You might not even realize that some of you are thinking.
tell you something. Some of your thinking is not your thinking. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Where do you give place to the devil? Tell me. Right there in between those two ears, right there, in your brain. You start thinking about you ain't no good and nobody loves you. I'll guarantee you, I'll guarantee you, you just pull yourself right down. You have, and you've got to be strong in this thing because thoughts are powerful. Can you imagine somebody that might have a thought like, nobody loves me, I'm going to shoot myself. And we've had a few folks do that over the years. Keep your thinking straight. Think. Everybody say, think. Now, that's a process, and that's, that's hard work. But I want you to see this other scripture. Verse 24, right below this now. That's what we used to be, and if you're thinking that way now, you'll always think about you're just an old sinner, and you're, no, you're rotten, and God, you know, you're never, you don't, you're just, didn't you? Listen, whoop! All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God, freely and graciously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy, through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. Now that's what you think on. That's what you think on. Write that scripture down. Put it on your, uh, on your refrigerator. Every day you thank God for the redemption that's been provided through Christ Jesus our Lord. See, this thing can't be just a once a week deal. It's got to be a 24-7 type of thing. Because the devil is deceitful. And he'll deceive you and get you to think it a certain way. And it will affect your attitude about yourself, about your family, about your husband, about your wife, about everybody at work, everybody at church. And it'll come over in your behavior. See, it's very simple. It is not complicated. Well, Bob, are you laboring on this? You, you got it, babe. I'm laboring on this because I want to see every one of God's people walk in victory all the time. Because I know the struggle, <clears throat> and that's where the fight is, right up there in our brain. This one guy said, you know, the boss uh, sent somebody out during the day, and uh, they said, now, it was about, uh, they went to work at 8 o'clock, and, and somebody came out and says, the boss wants to see you at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Now, from 8 to 3... What do you think is going through that person's mind? Right. How many knows what's going on in that person? The devil start working. Boy, what, what, he's going to get on your case now. He found out about what you did last week. He's going to let you have it, but good. And uh, uh, you just, uh, I mean, about three o'clock, you come in there and you're a nervous wreck. Oh, my goodness, you sit down. He said, Oh, yeah, uh, Mr. Tillman says, we, we, we need another foreman here. We're going to promote you to be a foreman. Oh, gee whiz, thank you. You walk out of there and you're sweating. How many understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> so we have to learn down. So what, what do you do with these thoughts that you know that is not from God? What do you do with these thoughts? You cast what? Them down, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And that's our responsibility. Okay? God won't do it for you. That's what we got to do. So thoughts produce attitudes. Our thoughts can wound us or our thoughts can heal us. Everybody say, our thoughts, our thoughts. can wound us or it can heal us. Okay? you got to start the healing process. Now, I know most of you know this. And Peter says, uh, I know you know this, but I aim to tell it to you over and over again because it's through repetition that you learn. And some of you might have been moving off the, you know, the straight and narrow path in your mind, and I'm trying to bring you back now and into the line of victory. 
by thinking on what God has done for it. Now look at that scripture. All are justified. Now who is that all? That's what I want to know. Who? Who? Who's that all? Huh? Is that you? That's me. That's us. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God. Now wait a minute. I got to get good enough to get justified. I sure got to do something though, you know. No, 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 no. That's what Je Jesus did that. See, it's hard for us. You read uh, uh, 1 Corinthians. Paul talks about the philosophers and, and, and the Jew and the Greek. And they, they think, they think of, no, he says the cross. I preach the cross, Paul says. Is it the cross that set us free? See, what Christ has did for us. Christ has justified us. The first Adam made sinners out of us. The last Adam from heaven made saints out of us. And we didn't have to lift a finger to do it other than to believe. And that's why it's so important to speak what you believe. Mm. Everybody look at that last part of that scripture again. Through the redemption which is provided. Who provided that redemption for us? See, everybody say Jesus. Yeah, but you got to be water baptized and you got to join our church and you got to be uh, have our elders lay hands on you. And no, 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 no. We don't say that. Death and burial and resurrection. I want to uh, turn over, if you will, to, uh, to put First um, Corinthians fifteen, verse one. First Corinthians. This is so important because you're going to meet many Christians and. Uh, they're going to say a little something different than the Bible because that's what they're taught. But look at this right here in 1 Corinthians 15. Get this thing going here. Boy, I thank God for this word, you know. I, I want to say this. Now, the first century Christians didn't have the word like we have it. Just think, all those hundreds of years must have been 15, I'm just roughly guessing that, that they didn't have scriptures after the crucifixion, after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Now notice uh, uh, the first verse in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. And now let me remind you. <laughs> and now let me remind you. How many, uh, when your loved one goes out of the house or something and you say, drive safely. Now, how many of you know they know that? I mean, anybody do that besides me? Look at all the hands. Yeah, drive safely. I know that. You don't have to tell me that. Yes, I do. To get it so burnt into your little brain to drive safely. <laughs> all right. So now let me remind you, since it seems to have escaped you. Oh, Pastor Paul. Oh, my goodness, he knew the human race. Uh, oh, we'll never forget that we were b bad sinners. But we, 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 oh, we just, you know, I wish we could forget that just for a while. I mean, except what Christ has done for us, you know. He made saints out of us. I ain't talking about your behavior now. That's another thing. We'll talk about that later. But since it has escaped you, brethren, of, notice, of the gospel, the glad tithings of salvation, which I, the Apostle Paul, proclaim to you. Not Peter, James, and John, but I, Paul, which you welcomed and accepted, and upon which your faith rests. Now, notice what it says. The glad tithing of the gospel of salvation that I preached to you, Paul said which he got freshly from the risen Lord. Look at the next verse. And by which you are saved. Well, I say that's an important salvation. What is that salvation, Paul? Because we are saved by that salvation. What is it? If you hold fast and keep firmly what I preach to you, unless you believe at first without uh, effect and all for nothing. In other words, you didn't really believe it in your heart. You didn't accept it in your heart. You just didn't, didn't, you know, you just said, yeah, yeah, but you really didn't believe. Notice, by which you are saved. By the gospel that Paul preached. Look at the next verse. For I passed on to you first of all what I 
also had received that Christ on Messiah, the anointed one, died for our sins in accordance with what the scriptures foretold, which was in the Old Testament, by the way. Nigh thee, even in thy mouth. Next scripture. That he was buried and that he rose on the third day as the scriptures foretold. Death, burial, and resurrection. Well, what about joining the church? You don't join the church. Once you accept Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the church. You see? But you go out there, and I guarantee you, if you go to another denomination, they'll say, well, you, you know, we're uh, going to baptize you into our church. No, you, no, no, that's something the Spirit does. The Spirit saves us. The Spirit baptizes us into the one body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That he was buried, that he arose on the third day as the scriptures foretold. Death, burial, and resurrection. Now, other things like uh, being functioning in the, in the body where Christ, bat, where the Holy Spirit baptized us into the body to function uh, uh, in Christ. And Michelle brought a good uh, four or five nights on, on how now that, we're, now that we are members of the body of Christ, we're to function and all of y'all function. So we all function in our place. We stay in our lane. We don't cross lanes. Stay in our lane. Whatever lane you are in, that's what you function in. Simple, not complicated, see? Now look at the next scripture. And also that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. Now he's substantiating the resurrection. And, and one more scripture on the next one. Then later he showed himself to more than 500 brethren as one time, the majority of whom are still alive, but some have fallen asleep in death. So that's pretty good. The 12 disciples, 500 brothers, testified that Jesus was raised from the dead. Here's what people don't understand. Do you know why you believe? God gave you the faith to believe. He gives every man the measure of faith. See how a dead man cannot raise himself. We were all dead in our trespasses. God in his mercy, while we were sinners, allowed his son to go to the cross and die and pay for the payment. He provided salvation for us. Then he came, and I remember the day I walked out aisle, and there was no invitation. The, 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 the preacher was uh, making announcements. I got out of a chair. It's like somebody had me by the collar. All I know is I went down there and stood before that preacher, and he said, can I help you? I said, yeah, I want to be saved. And I could quote scriptures to you. But when Christ saved me, the Spirit of God came into me. It's totally different. It's God from the beginning. Notice, God has begun a good work in us. And he will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. Don't be discouraged. Take heart. He begun it. I don't think he's going to save us and then expect us to get lost down the road. I believe, he can, I believe what he saves, he can keep. There is the keeping power of God as we line up with the Holy Spirit and don't rebel against him. And we keep on believing and trusting. And he'll lead us and direct us. I've lived long enough. I can go back through my life. I've had time and, and show you all the different steps that God has brought Susan and me down to where I'm at right now. Saving us. Baptizing us in the Holy Spirit. Calling us to preach. All the things that he's done in our lives. I look back now. It was God. God in the beginning. God in all in between, and God at the end, and right on, it's God. 
The, if you read 1 Corinthians, you'll find out that the world can't understand that. You'll read that. 1 Corinthians, that first chapter, when you get a chance. And if you understand it, God takes the simple things to confound the wise. Paul says he didn't call many mighty men what the world would consider simple and nothing. God takes makes Moses out of them, makes men and women of God out of them, because it's God. It's God. So you remember that. So your thoughts stay on the Lord. How many of you know that he's coming back for those that are looking for his appearance? So if you're looking for his appearance, you've got to be thinking about it. So what is in your brain? You really want to know, Bob? No, I don't. <laughs> don't shock me. I doubt if you'd shock me. <laughs> you wouldn't shock me. Put that on your refrigerator and you think about it. Now, we're going to go to time moving along here. Um, I want to turn to Philippians 4. And we're ready for some more in Philippians 4. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, I want to put a, inject a little negative in here, okay? That sort of wakes some folks up in case they're falling asleep on me. And we'll get back to the, uh, hold that just right there. Uh, <clears throat> how many of you know that murmuring is sin? Okay, murmuring is sin. You read the stories about the Israelites, and <clears throat> don't particularly care to read that, but uh, because of their murmuring, uh, God gave them what they desired. <laughs> it wasn't too good either. You know, I can honestly say that, that, that be, uh, uh, God, thank you for not answering some of my prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else can say that besides me? Yeah. Mm hmm? Yeah, you, 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 you remember that first, uh, or that first woman you uh, was planning on marrying? You remember that? Or that first man or woman, whatever? <laughs> Some of you are smiling. The Lord told you not to do it, but you did it anyway. So don't murmur. murmur. <laughs> Just rejoice. And look what it says there in uh, Philippians uh, 4, 4. I love it. Mm. Now, rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, that can't be. It must be rejoice in the Lord once in a while. Uh, let me tell you something. <clears throat> when, let me tell you when you really... I, I love to rejoice when the Holy Spirit's rich. You know, it's so easy to say, rejoice, 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 rejoice. Dum, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> rejoice. It's so easy when the Spirit's moving through the building. But everything's dead. Now rejoice. That's the test of your faith. Rejoice in the Lord always. I think about... Uh, Paul and Silas, they, there they are in that dungeon. I was thinking about that today. I said, Lord, that is awesome. I mean, this, the sewer run through the, the thing. It, it wasn't like they have TV and all they have in jail today, people. My goodness. <sighs> Horrible. And he writes this down. Rejoice. Always delight, gladden yourself in him. In case you didn't hear me the first time, I'll say it again. Rejoice. I say, Paul, how can you say that under the conditions that you and, and Silas was in? Because he knew if he had a self-pity party, that would have been the, 
that would have been the end of it. Because, see, the Holy Spirit don't move in, the, in that type of atmosphere. Say, it's up to us to start rejoicing. And the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to get in on that. And he starts rejoicing with us. See, we've been given the Holy Spirit to help us in our time of need. You might be discouraged. Well, you know, we have a God that gives encouragement. You may be a little depressed today in some ways, but we have a God that will, will strengthen us. But you've got to learn to reach out and draw. And when you start rejoicing, 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 that activates the Holy Spirit in you, and he begins to rejoice and rejoice. And next thing you know, you, you, you're not, I mean, it's not mechanical anymore. It's spiritual. And I mean, wow, man, life begins to jump up. Yeah. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. All right, I want you to go now, if you will. Now, look at the verse 5. Go to verse 5. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness. Now, uh, William is at the table, and there's one piece of chicken on that plate. Now, which one do you think is going to grab that chicken leg? <laughs> then Mike comes up and says, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Unselfishness, your considerationness, your forbearing spirit. Let, let me tell you, some folks, you just got to forbear with them. I thank God for my wife for bearing for me, to, you know. You, you know, you, you might think I'm somebody easy to live with, but I growl when I sleep. <laughs> no, I don't. It's my stomach, really. <laughs> All right, look. <clears throat> for bearing spirit. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. Now, you remember my little chart that I, they, they believed up that, that he was coming real soon? So you have to see that in the scriptures. And so you'll see that all through the scriptures. The Lord is near. He's coming soon. But see, they didn't know the mystery of the church. They didn't know the mystery of the body of Christ. A many-member body, Jew and Gentile, in one body becomes one man. Neither male nor female, neither Jew, Greek, whatever, all one in Christ. They didn't have that revelation. They didn't know that. But they preached from what they had. But see, revelation comes down through the years. Everything wasn't given at one time. You remember we were talking about the mysteries. There's 11 of them in the New Testament. The body of Christ was a mystery. The people in the past didn't know that. That's what God was going to do. Incarnation was a mystery. So there's the mysteries, 11 mysteries. We'll get back on them later on. But look what it says. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your consideration. You know, it's really not hard. Do unto others before they get a chance to do it unto you. <laughs> I mean, do unto others. But, you know, we've got to stop and think. Get that mind renewed. Because we are in a society to be first. First in football, first in baseball. And that goes over into the church a lot of times. First in yeah. You know, it on the stick. Who's the greatest among you? Hmm. Who wants to serve? Are you kidding? <laughs> Serve me. That's not Christ. He did not please himself. Oh, I say when I read that, my knees get weak. Romans 15, verse 3. He didn't please himself. He came down and took, the, on the, on, uh, took on the form of a servant, took our flesh and became a servant, humbled himself. 
If you want to go up, you better learn to humble yourself. You ain't going nowhere in God. God resists what? The proud, but gives what? Grace to the humble. That's how you receive from God. All right, go to the next verse now. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Now, that's a hard one. That's why we've got to be so connected to the Lord because I many times I've told you about my anxiety experience and I thought I was going to die and they put me in the hospital, turned me upside down and sideways and this way and that way, checked me over, and I was as healthy as you could find anybody to be healthy. But I knew what I had to do. Cast those imaginations down. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is that. And we start thinking these anxious thoughts. We're not going to make it. This person's against me. That person's against me. In fact, I'm against myself. Yeah, you are. When you start thinking like that, you're against yourself. Somebody say, preach it. I think it will. See, this thing is so subtle. That's why you've got to know the word of the Lord and realize, like I said, know all the Bible, quote it from verse to verse, find one. But there's certain scriptures, certain principles we have to learn if we're going to walk in victory and defeat the enemy. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. I heard, I heard somebody say, oh, the blood, the blood, the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give place to the devil, too, if you're not careful. Because Paul would have said, don't you worry, you can't give place to the devil. He didn't say that. He warned us. He said, give no place to the devil. Let me tell you something. You're thinking what we're thinking, what I'm thinking, what you're thinking about one another and about people and all the different things in life. What we're thinking, if we're thinking not according to the word of God, we are giving place to the devil. Don't shout me down, church. Some of you live long enough can say amen to that. Some of you are on your way. Everybody say, give yes. no place yes. to the devil. Yes. And you do it right in your mind first. It all starts there. You know why I ate that ice cream that was in the refrigerator? Boing! <laughs> ice cream in the refrigerator. I'll get it before Susan does. <laughs> it all start right there. Right there in your little old mind. Now, let's stop for a moment and examine ourselves for the last week. How have you been thinking? Somebody said, I ain't going to tell. I know you're not. The Bible says, examine yourself. Don't examine me. Don't examine your neighbor next door. Examine yourself. Because that might be why you sort of feel down and out. Now, there's a lot of things that can make us feel down and out if you start thinking about it. If you've got kids, you've got enough to go crazy on. If you got grandkids, you can be in the nut house in a real quick time if you didn't know how to handle this up here. If you got great kin great kin <laughs> great grandchildren, we'll be at your funeral. <laughs> Scratch those thoughts. Thank you, Lord. But, but you see, we got to know to handle that, how to handle all of that. All these thoughts come into our mind. And they're all in the air, and you watch TV. Is the news on? Click it off. I'm getting that way. I used to just enjoy, you know, you watch California. It's burning. I mean, the whole East the whole, uh, what do you call it, Gulf, not Gulf, but West, West Coast, it's off the map. It's burning all up, all the houses, thousands of them. My goodness, then there's a tornado over here. The president is tweeting everything. <laughs> I have never seen it like this in all my life. But I've read the Bible. 
And I'm not going to worry about it because here's what it says. Do not fret or have any anxiety about what's going on in the world, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. That's the answer right there. You write it down, you nail it down, you put it on your refrigerator, and that's what we, we do every day. Every day you do that. Go to the next verse. And God's peace. Woo! See the concept, see the, uh, the, uh, the uh, sequences there? You did that first verse, and then what happens? What will, what will God do? God's peace shall be yours. That transcendental state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot. Did you, I'm going to stop right there for a moment. Some people... And, and I know how it is, and I've been there too. They're just not satisfied where they is. But the trouble is, I see them. God moves them from there, down the road, puts them way over here, and they still ain't satisfied. Right. Something's wrong. We had these people in the church, and they were having a rough time financially. Pastor Bob says, Sue, would you pray you that God would bless us financially? And I said, Lord, if I did, I, well, you know, are they going to still serve you? And, and Because I found that sometimes people uh, get blessed, they quit serving God. And so we prayed, Lord bless them. Well, anyway, what a blessing. The blessing came. Uh, his father, doing Hugo, uh, was driving down 61 and a horse ran out in front of him and he squerved to miss the horse, hit the tree and killed himself. But he had a whole lot of money. And they inherited a whole lot of money. And I hadn't seen him yet since. <laughs> it's sad. If God bless you, are you going to still serve him? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? God said to the Israelites, now, when you get into the land, don't get big-headed. I'm using street language. Y'all know what that is. And, don't, and quit serving the Lord. Because I bless you so much, you just quit serving me. And, and uh, uh, besides, uh, you know, I'm, all this wealth is because of my intelligence and all my stuff. And they quit. You know, he warned them about that. So if God blesses you, will you continue to serve the Lord? Hmm? Okay, I heard one yes over here. Did I hear them over here? Yeah, I'll get a couple more over here. Yeah. See, because uh, it seems like when people are, uh, you know, uh, have it rough, you know, they, 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 they need the Lord, but then they get, you know, it on the stick and they get all this wealth and everything. And now, uh, you know, they uh, I don't thank you, Lord, but I'm, I can take it from here. <laughs> How much you say you want it? How much you want? So there's so much for us to learn, but see, there's the thought life again. You start thinking wrong, see, and we've got to come back. But look at that scripture. That is powerful. Assured of his salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is. That, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There's the protection. That's the shield of the faith. That's, that's the helmet of salvation right there. You get that right there. You know, I, I, I try to counsel young people and they get married. Sometimes the, 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 the woman's... Um, the girl that's going to get married, you know, and he's, you know, this young boy, you know, he wants to please his wife, you know, and of course it took uh, uh, 60 years for dad and mom to, to accumulate all this wealth and this big house and two cars and a, and a, and a boat and a couple trailers and, and this and that and everything you think of and one thing and another and, uh, and, and, and she's going to get married and she thinks she's going to have all that just like that. And then they go out and, and, and get everything on credit and become a slave all their life. Anybody love me now? Sometimes I'm hard to learn, but I'm telling you the truth. I know. I know what I'm talking about. So 
use wisdom. Use wisdom. If God does bless you, then you can move along in those lines. But be content where you are at and what you do have. And believe, yes, believe for more. Believe that God will bless you and mature you along the line that when he does bless you, you won't run off to um, California and start gambling. Or buy everything you see. Sometimes I think I said this one time you open a, uh, Susan's uh, closet, you know, and uh, you see all these dresses, all this stuff she has, but she accumulated over the years, and our girls give her so much, and people give her a lot. But my suits, my two suits, they got a special... <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> but just can't you see that? You walk in the closet and all the dresses and the shoes and the pocketbooks and all the things that women like. Listen, don't, don't beat me yet. Let me finish the message and you can shoot me. <laughs> I love all of you. You know I do. Uh, how many women in here have a lot of, I don't want to say junk. I mean, I mean, <laughs> You got more than you can wear, right? Yeah. All right. But keeping our minds straight. And boy, look at that. That's so powerful. And God's peace, God's peace shall be yours. That transcendental state of a soul assured of its salvation. Powerful. But it's got to be a lifestyle, a lifestyle, a lifestyle. See? All right, let's go to the next verse, and we're going to close down here and, and let you go home, eat some pizza. <laughs> For the rest, brethren, whatever is true. Now, we're talking about thinking, talking about our mind area. We're going to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. If we start thinking negative, we'll become negative people, and everything is down and out all the time. For the rest of brethren, whatever is true. All right, we think on what is true. Whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable, we think on that. And seemly, we think on that. Whatever is just, we think on that. Whatever is pure, we think on that. Whatever is lovely, we think on that. And lovable, we think on that. What is kind, we think on that. And, and winsome, we think on that. Gracious, we think on that. And if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think. Everybody say think. think. Boy, what an exercise. Think. I have witnessed and I have ministered to people. They didn't realize that all this thing in their mind was not of themselves. It's either your thoughts or the enemy's thoughts that he projects. Those are what you call the fiery darts of the enemy right into our minds to control God's people and get them to be like him instead of like Jesus. This is the warfare, saints. You know yourself, this last week, this what you've been thinking about. Look, actually, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. Fix your minds on them. Powerful. Mm, mm. Now look at verse 9, and then we'll close on this one. Somebody said, praise God. Practice what you have learned here tonight and received here tonight and heard here tonight and seen in me and model your way of living on it. This is why a minister is to set an example for the flock. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being will be with you. Powerful. One, two, three, four, five. Down the line. Now, if you, your mind's been wandering, I guarantee you, I, if I was a betting man, as you were here, in here tonight, it's amazing the different thoughts came into your mind as I was teaching and preaching. I've always thought about a little red uh, light bulb, you know, and 
Every time you could, you could hook the person up, you know. And I know you're tired. You had your time. You, how many love me tonight? I'll have a little red button on mine, too. <laughs> Bob, are you thinking that? You're the preacher. <laughs> no, get out of there, devil. <laughs> I can see the lights go boom, 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 boom. <laughs> then all of a sudden one explodes over here. <laughs> It ain't easy all the time, and I don't need to tell you that. But I got to say, it's hell sometimes. And I know it. I've been around a long time. But during those times, God is with you. But our part is discipline. See, a disciple means discipline one. And we have to discipline that mind. And those thoughts that the enemy put in your mind, you cast them down. Because if you don't, next thing you know, you'll be doing them. Because they become part of your emotions, your feeling rim, and your actions, and your attitudes. Transformed by the renewing of our minds into the image of the Son of the living God. Father, we thank you now that the Holy Spirit's with us. He's been given to us to strengthen us, to teach us, to direct us, to guide us, to empower us, to bring our thoughts into the obedience of Christ. We ask for your help, Lord, and we want to thank you now for the help that you're going to give us, that tomorrow we'll get up and we'll start thinking like you have told us to think in Philippians 4, 4, right on down the line to verse 9. Thank you, Father, for your help in this area. Your people need it. We all need it. In Jesus' name, and all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up. We'd be glad to pray for you.